but their their eyes they had this sparkle to them mm -hmm. and you could see the light energy coming from them and again it was like this this sense of like unconditional unconditional love and a sense of belonging you just find yourself right in the center of this love of this light I'd like you to just look around and tell me what you see. What do you feel or see? I feel, I feel this overwhelming, unconditional love. Hello, I'd like to welcome Lori Lambert from Glenville, New York. Uh, Lori had a near-death experience when she was 19 years old during a whitewater rafting expedition during the her uh, time in the Navy. And uh, so Lori is here to share her story with us. Uh, and in a little while, we'll also dive into some hypnosis and make contact again with this presence that she experienced on the other side. So uh, welcome, Laurie. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, my near-death experience occurred in May 1987. Uh, my duty station was uh, Coos Head, Oregon. And um, I was in the U.S. Navy. Uh, I decided to register for the whitewater rafting excursion at the Rogue River because... Um, it was a way of bonding with my coworkers. And um, I decided to join my watch floor team as part of building a stronger bond with them. Um, all the Rogue River Rapids except two fell into class two, one, two, and three difficulty. Um, the part that I had gotten almost drowned in was a class four section um called blossom bar um during the day it was like the one two and three rapids and it was pretty calm but um the water was it was like really high and it was very cold and um it was running fast that year um so after lunch we went we went through mule canyon which is like it's like the doorway, basically, to the class four section. Um, the water is like 30 feet deep in some places on the road. And um, I had to do a right, left, right maneuver with my paddle. And I tried to follow the guy that was doing it. And he got through it without a difficulty. But when I tried it, I missed that I missed, you had to do it pretty fast. So I missed one side and I wound up hitting a rock on the picket fence. They call it the picket fence. When you get to Blossom Bar, it's like a, a series of four huge boulders. And if you go that way, you're going to wipe out. And I, and I did. I hit the rock broadside with my inflatable kayak. And I rolled out into the water, which was about 30 feet. I had a life vest on, but it was like a washing machine. The current was so strong that no matter what I did, I couldn't get to the surface. And I, and I couldn't feel the bottom either. It was dark there, but I could see the sky. So I'm kind of like trying to reach for the sky and nothing's happening. I'm, I'm, inhaling water, ice cold water, and I'm panicking. And I seriously, the first thing that went through my mind was that I'm going to die here. And I asked God to help me. I said, God, please help me. Was and it, was it like a, just a fear in the mind or did you just have an intuition? I'm actually going to die here. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. intuition. 
It was like, I am going to die here. If I don't get like help now, that that's what's going to happen. And um, after I said, well, God, God, please help me. The water around me turned white. My lungs stopped burning. And I felt like I was being propelled into a white tunnel where my feet were connected by a silver cord. And I just went through the tunnel and it was very calm and it was very peaceful. And I emerged on the other side and it was like a room, but it had, it looked like clouds, but it was like solid. Like it gave a feeling of like, there's a room here. And there were three beings in, in the room and they looked like prisms of light. They looked like glass prisms. And there were, there was one that was shorter, one that was like medium sized. And one in the middle was the tallest one. And I immediately was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I was like, in my mind, it was like, what is this? Who are these things here? But they had given me this sense of like um, adoration. Like mm. they worshiped every cell I was made of. Mm. But I wasn't comfortable with their appearance. So they changed. They transformed into like an angel that I could recognize. The only difference was that their, their wings weren't like bird wings. Their wings were like uh, fiber optic, like cables, mm -hmm. and it kind of made the shape of wings, mm -hmm. but light, like yeah. light energy. It it was like flickering through. Yeah, I just and, had uh, the, uh, sorry, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, uh, The Abyss. Have you ever seen that? Where, uh, okay, well, they he goes down to uh, the very bottom of the, the ocean and he encounters some aliens and it's very similar uh imagery to what you're describing so I, anyway <laughs> um okay so they right. <laughs> were like fiber optics but their their eyes they had this sparkle to them um if you've ever looked at the inside of a dvd or a cd when it's spinning that flickering kind of like you see multicolors. Mm -hmm. That's how their eyes look. Mm -hmm. And you can see the light energy coming from them. And again, it was like this, this sense of like unconditional, unconditional love and a sense of belonging. And just, just like I was home and the one on the left, the shortest one, he said his name was Yashael. And he said that he, I've been with you since the beginning and I will be with you until the end. The one in the middle, the tallest one had a book. And in the book, it wasn't a real book. It was like when the pages turned, it was like images of like when I was conceived all the way to things that I did during my life that I might have been, done a better job or the things that I did well. And then there was an image of a man and two children and you couldn't see their faces. They were just silhouettes. Um, and then the last page was a multitude of children and you couldn't see their faces. It was just like silhouettes. I don't know what that meant, but um, they, he, they, he, the third angel said that I needed to be there for them, that I could not stay, that I was not done with whatever it is that I was supposed to do on earth, that I needed to go back to my body. And... Yashael said that he was my guardian, my angel. And he said that you need to go back to your body. It isn't time yet. 
Um, but while you're here, I'll show you some things. So we, I took his hand and we flew. And I could see a waterfall with no beginning and no end. And like when I looked up, there was this white light that kind of rained down on everything. And it was just this sense of just love. I didn't want to leave. Yeah. Um, there was a field that looked like wheat. And when God's breath blew over it, it would sing. And there was colors of flowers that I can't even describe that it was so brilliant and so perfect that I couldn't find it here, right? Um, he took me to a place with like a small lake but when you look into it, you can see people on earth going about their daily, like I could see my family and everything. But at the same time, I wanted to be there. I didn't care about what was going on down on earth. Mm -hmm. I felt so comfortable and at home. Mm -hmm. Next to the, to the, um, the water, there was an old country fence, like the wooden ones that you tied together. Mm -hmm. um, and beyond that was this huge tree. And I mean, it looked like an oak, but it was golden. And it had gold leaves on it. And like, again, when God's breath blew through the leaves, the leaves would change to birds. And they would fly off. And um, Yashiel told me that I can't go beyond the barrier. He told me that I needed to go back to my body. He said that it was time for me to do what I needed to do here. And he said that I had to be here for them. And I told him, no, <laughs> yeah. I like it here. This is yeah. nice. I feel loved here. Yeah. And he said, it's time for you to go back to your body. And he pushed me. He pushed me so hard that I popped up out of that hole that I was stuck in. Mm. All the water came out of my lungs. Oh, wow. I know that when they picked me up out of the water, they grabbed me by the back of my life jacket and dragged me up on like one of those pontoon boats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they didn't have to do CPR or anything like that I was just panicked mm -hmm. and it, it was like an instant like what happened something happened but I can't like remember the details of it and I didn't get the details until months after the NDE I would get visions and dreams and see things and then it was like no explanation because back then they didn't have the internet. They didn't right. have cell phones. Yeah, yeah. They had libraries. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know what an NDE was yeah. until Windows 95. Yeah. And then I looked up angel dreams, dreaming of angels, um, drowning. So you, and, uh, after, they, after you were taken out of the water, uh, you didn't have a memory of what just happened right away that came came back eventually came so. back, it came back little by little mm. and i was like okay this is weird why do i keep dreaming about water and the trip and seeing these things and i didn't have a name for it mm. didn't know what it was yeah until you know i was able to like look it up on a computer in 95 and yeah. Now it feels more like a complete picture, not not just trying to patch things together, I guess, or yes and no. I still like wonder what they meant by I need to be. I know that I did meet a man and I got married and I had two children. So that did come to pass. 
but the many children that I saw was like more than you can count. Interesting. Fascinating. All right. Um, well, if you're up for it, we can, we can explore this, uh, this memory of yours more deeply and go into the experience of it directly. If you'd like through some hypnosis, if you're up for that. Great. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I'll have a sip of my tea if you want to get uh, comfortable in your chair. Uh, just readjust yourself if you need to. And just continue on through the body. Stopping anywhere you need to, to release any tension. You can start to feel the body relaxing even more. I want you to find yourself in that place right now where there's no worries, no problems. Everything is okay. Everything is okay. Totally peaceful. Pure silence, pure awareness and love. Can you find yourself in a place like that right now? Yeah. Can you tell me about it? Do you see anything? Do you feel anything? I see. I see the water. I see the waterfall. Like I'm at the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. So I can feel like the mist mm -hmm. from the from the current. Mm -hmm. Like it's touching my body. Feel loved. Feel wanted. Just find yourself right in the center of this love, of this light. I'd like you to just look around and tell me what you see. What do you feel or see? I feel, I feel this overwhelming, unconditional love. And this has always been with you, this love. You've never been separate from it. It's always been a part of you. It's always been there in the background. So beautiful, so accepting, because it's not separate from you. You are this love. I'd like you to just allow this, this light, this peace to just wash right through you, wash away any heavy burdens that the human mind, that your human mind has been carrying. Just allow it to wash all of that away. Just seeing that it's, it's not speaking for the real truth of you, that you are this love, and that you've never been separate from it, and that you can access it whenever you want. It's always there. And I'd also like you to ask this light now, this love, just ask it from the center of your heart. Just ask it how you can best share this light and this love 
in your life? What is the, the path forward? How can you share this love and come into an awareness of how best to be with others and yourself moving forward? You are who you are. Your gifts. Use your gifts. And what are those gifts exactly? What are some examples of those gifts? I see prophetic things, have visions. I can look at the pictures of missing people mm -hmm. and know that they've crossed. Mm -hmm. I And predict things. Mm -hmm. Hear angels. I get warnings about things. So I'd like you to just ask this light, ask this love to enhance these abilities for you even more so when you come back into the body and you begin your life again and just be guided towards a new direction where you can share these abilities more easily, where you can access these abilities more easily. And it can come through a dream or it can come through a spontaneous intuition that you have. I just ask to be given a way to access these abilities more easily, even more so moving forward. So that when you come in the body, you'll feel a new sense of direction in your life of what to focus on specifically. And any confusion you've had in the past, that'll all be gone and you'll have a new clarity to guide you because you'll be able to access this light easily from now on, this love. And all it will take is just to close your eyes whenever you want and just drop into the body, allow the body to become rested easily and recognize that you are the love, you are the awareness, that you've always longed for. And so you don't even need to long for that anymore. You can just be that and access it. And through that process of accessing that love, all of your gifts will become enhanced and you'll be able to access them more easily. fully inhabiting the body now, the body just being very rested, very at peace. And five, you can open your eyes. Hi. Yeah, the body does that. <laughs> How do you feel? You're weird. <laughs> <laughs> 
in a good way. A good weird, yeah. He said, I am. He said, you are already doing this. Mm. The children are the people out there. Mm. Well, that would that would make sense uh, when you saw you were flipping through that book in your previous NDE there, and and you saw many faces or children, or or you saw images of children. So that would make sense that your abilities there to sense things and having to do with missing persons. Mm -hmm. That was always a gift that I I didn't like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, their gifts are often a can be a mixed blessing. <laughs> I've been sensitive since I was a child. But the near-death experience made me more sensitive. I started hearing angels, started seeing missing people's pictures and knowing how they died, knowing that they were on the other side. Prophetic dreams. I had multiple prophetic dreams. Are you are you utilizing these gifts, these abilities already, uh, or? I, oh, I tell my family about them. Yeah, so maybe it's time to expand your reach and you know offer your gifts in a wider you know way. So, yeah, your hope- voice is very um calming good good yeah yeah it helps to have a monotone voice for this stuff <laughs> yeah, I guess. so do you feel like you have some clarity moving forward yeah i do good good well thank you Lori, for uh hanging out and sharing your story. Is there anything else you wanted to touch on before we part ways or? I felt like when I, I felt like when I asked for him to, to, to enhance my gifts, if I saw it look like fireworks, like, you know, when it falls down, mm-hmm. like it was raining down on me. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, some energetic uh, phenomenon going on there, I'm sure. Very cool. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was deep. Good. good. Deep is good. That love, though, man, it's just. It's yours to give now. It's. it's, (laughs) Yeah. I don't have words to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because in saying that, you can actually kind of get a taste of it. You know, just in saying that there's no words helps to describe it. Yeah. And it's a part of me. Yeah. Thank goodness. I'll uh I'll send the the uh link to the video once it's all ready to go and I, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm enjoying this process. It's wonderful. How many how many other people did you or have you? Yeah, your number of or number four right. so done or yeah i've done so three what number three just before you so you're number four 
something else. That's that's a gift. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, just like your gifts, it's, it's something that I guess I'm being called to start sharing. So we're, we're just starting at the same time, I guess. <laughs> wow. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. I, mean, I, 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 before we got on the call, I was kind of like, I don't know if I can be hypnotized. I don't, know if i can because i have trouble focusing mm -hmm. i have attention deficit <laughs> and i have uh meditation is really hard for me i literally have to wear headphones like sound it's just to block out everything but i just went in there and it was like good yeah well. <laughs> good good i'm glad to hear it easier sometimes i think when you have kind of an external voice guiding you along without your mind having to try to you know you know i tried to i tried to focus just on, like on your voice yeah yeah well that's your intuition working for you oh it's probably good to, to pay attention to your voice <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you knew enough. You could probably sense that I wasn't, uh, you know, some shady character and you could trust where I was coming from. So that's all you needed. <laughs> yeah. Did you get like a certification? Did you, how did you? Uh, yeah, so I've been a self-inquiry teacher for uh, quite a long time. Um, and uh, in the last five years or so, I've been doing incorporating hypnosis into what I've been doing. Uh, so I never really was interested in hypnosis, but uh, I had someone reach out to me, uh, a hypnotherapist who had been seeing some of, some of my stuff on YouTube. And uh, he's like, hey, you know, I think you'd be a good fit for this stuff. And so he's just started sending me all of these trainings. And, <laughs> and then you just... And then I just... Yeah, it it, it, uh, it just started to make sense. And so I think, uh, yeah, I must be familiar with this stuff on some other level that uh, maybe I'm not even aware of. But, uh, yeah, it just felt natural. So here I am. It's life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, stay in touch and keep me posted on how things go. And I'll uh, I'll send you the link to the video when okay. it's ready. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Lori. Thank you, Kyle. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.